morning, Father. Happy Fiesta. Today is the feast, the solemnity of the Most Holy Trinity. All of us are familiar with those things because in our prayers, it is always directed, it's always directed to God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And if you can notice, from the beginning until the end of our prayer, it always starts with the, with the Holy Trinity and ends with the Holy Trinity. The same also with our life. Our life starts with God and ends with God. That's why our life is the life of the Trinity. But how can we know God personally? And how can we grow in our understanding of and wisdom and the truth of God? <clears throat> Jesus made a clear claim which only God can make. He knows all things, the present and the past as well, and as also the future. So God is all-knowing. He knows everything. And Jesus not only claims to speak the truth, he calls himself the very source of truth when he proclaims that he is the way, the truth, and the life. And now Jesus promise, promises to send his disciples the spirit of truth, and he will guide them in understanding and all that Jesus came to say and do. And Jesus tells his disciples that it is the role of the Holy Trinity, Holy Spirit to reveal what is true. It is through the gift and working of the Holy Spirit who enlightens our hearts and minds that we come to understand that the Godhead is a trinity of persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This is the very core of our faith, the very basic of our faith, the very foundation of our faith. That's why we are called Christians because we believe in the Holy Trinity, the revealed persons of God. And the Jewish people understood God as a creator and father of all that he made. And they understood Israel, the promised son and his ears, as God's firstborn son. And Jesus reveals the true nature of God the Father in an unheard of sense. Jesus revealed to them that it's, uh, it's unique. It's unheard from the Jews. It's different from the Jews. And he is, and according to Jesus, God is the eternal Father by his relationship to his eternal and only begotten Son, and who reciprocally, his Son is only in relation to the Father. It means God is the Father, at the same time, the one to reveal the nature of God is also God. That's why Father and the Son are the same God, also different person. The Father is the Father, the Son is the Son, but their nature is God. It's unique, isn't it? And the Jews doesn't like it. That's why when one, one of the accusations to Jesus is that he blasphemes God because Jesus claims to be God, equal to God. And the Spirit likewise is inseparable, in, inseparably one with the Father and the Son. And Jesus reveals the triune nature of God and the inseparable union of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's why in our prayers, in the opening prayer in the collect, we have to emphasize the unity, the divine unity of God. Of course, all of us cannot understand totally the nature of God because that is God. If we understand totally God, God is not anymore God. That's why God, the Holy Trinity, is always a mystery. What we know are those things revealed to us by Jesus Christ. What we know is that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are one true God. And 
how we don't know because that is the nature of God what we know is those things revealed by Jesus however the mission of Jesus and the Holy Spirit are the same to reveal the glory of God and to share that glory with us by uniting us in a community of love with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Jesus and the Holy Spirit brings us, it would help us to partake to the community of love of God. That's why we have the sacraments. We have baptism, confirmation, anointing, the Eucharist, the priesthood, marriage, everything. Those things are, are given to us by God so that we can partake the life of Jesus and the life of God. That is why Jesus tells his disciples that the Spirit will reveal the glory of the Father and the Son and will speak what is true. And before his Passover, Jesus revealed the Holy Spirit as a paraclete, a helper who will be with the who will be with Jesus' disciples to teach and to guide them into all truths. The ultimate end and the purpose for which God created us is the entry of God's creature into the perfect unity of the Blessed Trinity. That is the purpose why we are here. So that we can partake in baptism, we are called to share in the life of the Holy Trinity here on earth and in faith and after death in eternal life. That's why we are united. We are, we, are, we, are, we are uniting ourselves to God as we partake the sacraments. Saint Clement of Alexandria, a bishop, an early church father and teacher at the Catechetical School at Alexandria in the first century of Christianity, he said, What an astonishing mystery! There is one Father of the universe, one Logos or one Word of the universe, and also one Holy Spirit, and every one and the same. There is also one Virgin and become Mother, and according to Clement, I should like to call her church. So it's beautiful. That's why our church is called Catholic. Because it is universal that from different races and nations, we become one church. Because as one church, we are partakers of the one God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. It's beautiful. This feast is beautiful because it would emphasize the unity of one church. If the church is suffering from, from the other country or other part of the region or other part of the country, we experience also their pain because we are one church. We are one body of Jesus Christ. That's why even one member of our parish is ill. They are, not, they are not only the one who is affected. All of us are affected. And in St. Dennis, we are a close community. You know each other already. We know each other already. By face or by name, by word. That's why all of us are affected because we are one body of Jesus. But how can we personally know the Father and His Son? It is the Holy Spirit. You see? It is the Holy Spirit who reveals the Father and the Son to us and He gives us the gift of faith to know and understand the truth of God's Word. And through the Holy Spirit, we proclaim our ancient faith what is our ancient faith but ever new? That is the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ until He come again. That's what we are proclaimed in the Mass. The 
mystery of faith. Christ is dying, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. It is always the Holy Spirit who would help us to understand the mystery of our faith. And so that, so that we can have to know God personally in our life. It is the Holy Spirit who directed us to know God into our life. Then the Lord gives us His Holy Spirit as our divine teacher and helper that we may grow in the knowledge and wisdom of God. That's why as we continue this Mass, let us ask the Holy Spirit to help us and to guide us so that we can understand and we can encounter God in our life. That our life is always united and our life is directed always to God. So my brothers and sisters, we pray that the Holy Trinity would always help us and always guide us to all truths so that one day we can be with God forever. Amen.